Hello everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Jamal Arif and I am part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. This session is about the best practices for virtual cloud network. It's a level 200 course uh, and it is recommended that you take the level 100 uh, and a level 200 course before uh, you take this course. This is our safe harbor statement. So I'll give you a minute to just read through the statement itself. So the objectives of TIFF this uh, session is to go over uh, some of the best practices design uh, when you are uh, designing your virtual cloud network. Uh, and one of the important aspects of VCN design is how do you design your subnets? How do you size up your subnets uh, and your CIDR? Again, the prerequisites for this course are a virtual cloud network level 100 course and a virtual cloud network level 200 course. So before we go on to the best practices of a virtual cloud network, just a quick review uh, or recap of some of the key uh, things that you need to remember for virtual cloud network. So VCN network range is defined when you create a VCN and it cannot be modified afterwards. Whatever range that you define at the start, it's a contiguous IPv4 CIDR block. Secondly, VCN is a regional construct so whenever you create a virtual cloud network in Ashburn, you'll see that it is available uh, across all the fall domains and availability domains in that virtual cloud in that uh, region. Currently, the subnets within a virtual cloud network are specific to an availability domain, uh, but regional subnets are on the roadmap as well. Subnets uh, can have one route table, but multiple security lists can be associated to it. So security lists can be both stateful and stateless. Uh, and all hosts within a VCN can route to all other hosts uh, and you don't need a specific route table or a route entry for that. Uh, the route table entries are for destinations outside the virtual cloud network. For a VCN, the allowed range is uh, slash 16 to a slash 30. Uh, and whenever you have decide, uh, defined a VCN and when you are going to define a, a subnet within that VCN, the first two IP addresses and the last one in each subnet CIDR is reserved by the by the service itself. So let's move ahead on virtual cloud network best practices. So when you're in when you are creating or designing your networking infrastructure, uh, just make sure to maximize your use of availability domains uh, for high availability. Uh, as you all know that availability domains are physically isolated and they do not share the resources like power uh, and networking. Uh, which means that the likelihood, likelihood of multiple availability domains failing within a region is very small. This gives your application high availability. If your application is uh, a single AD based application, then please make use of the fall domains. Uh, fall domains uh, is kind of a grouping of hardware and infrastructure within a single availability domain. So each availability domain contains three fall domains. Uh, and fall domains let you distribute your instances so that they're not on the same physical hardware within a single availability domain as well. So this actually gives you another level of high availability within a single AD as well. When you're designing your virtual cloud network, just make sure that your VCN CIDR ranges are not overlapping because in the later time, if you want to do any VCN peering, you won't be able to do those. So it's best to avoid any overlapping of VCN CIDRs right from this get-go. You should also make sure that when you set up your VCN ranges within the cloud, they don't uh, overlap from your organization's private IP within your customer premises equipment. Uh, you should also ensure that not all the IP addresses are allocated at once within when a, when a VCN or a subnet is created. Just uh, have enough resources as a reserve so that in future, if you are uh, if you want to scale up, uh, you do have some IP addresses for future use as well. When you are creating the virtual cloud network, just make sure that you are evenly distributing your subnets across all the availability domains so that for your application, you have the ability to create a networking infrastructure that is highly available across and distributed across the three availability domains. 
in a lot of cases you see that there are some hosts which might be in a different subnet but have similar routing requirements and this in those cases you can use the same route tables uh, across multiple different subnets uh, so for instance if there are multiple public hosts and they all want to have a same routing table and get to the internet using the internet gateway they can have a common routing table uh, and similarly if there are some private subnets which all go through the uh, which all uh, forward the traffic to a NAT gateway or a firewall instance before they actually uh, send the traffic outside they can have a common routing table as well so continuing on the virtual cloud network best practices when you are creating the security list Please make sure that you use security lists as firewalls to manage your connectivity uh, both north-south and east-west so you can manage what kind of uh, connectivity uh, works for incoming and outgoing connections out of the virtual cloud network and also manage the communication internal between your subnets within the virtual cloud network as well. The subnet as we uh, went through the recap, each subnet can have maximum of five security lists attached to it and all of the security rules in that security list are then inherited by each individual host in that subnet. The private subnets are recommended to have individual route tables so that you can control the flow of traffic uh, within and outside of, of the virtual cloud network. We also recommend that uh, you can use the identity and access management policy infrastructure to restrict uh, the users from managing virtual cloud network resources. So within your virtual cloud network, you can have your admin virtual cloud network uh, users to just manage the overall VCN resources. And then all the other users can have less privileges and they can make use of uh, less privileged, least privileged policy infrastructure like use or inspect or read and not able to just completely manage the VCN itself. You can also make use of OCI tags to tag your virtual cloud network resources uh, so that you know as you grow into a large organization your your virtual cloud network resources are also following your organizational naming conventions. So VCN and subnet sizing is another important aspect whenever you are designing your virtual cloud networking infrastructure. Uh, so let's take an example of a large VCN subnet size. Uh, so for instance, we can have uh, a slash uh, 16 to a slash 30 uh, size or for, for VCN. So let's go ahead with an example of a 10 slash 16 network that we have set up for our virtual cloud network. The first thing is that we divide the slash 16 network into four equal blocks three blocks would be for three availability domains and the fourth one would be a reserve block so for for future access so we have divided the four slash 16 into three slash 18s and then an additional slash 18 for an extra or reserved ip block within each 80 now we can have a public and a private subnet so we can divide the block that we have uh, saved for 81 into individual private and prior public subnets now usually in application infrastructures you will see that the private instances are more than your uh, out facing public instances so we'll have a bigger block for a public private instance and a smaller block for public so we have divided the slash 18 network into two slash 19s one of the slash 19 would be for private instances and the other slash 19 would be for both the public and it would also give us some extra and spare uh, reserved IPs within that availability domain. So we not, next we go ahead and divide the uh, public or spare slash 19 into two slash 20s which gives us a slash 20 for our public subnet and also a slash 20 as a reserved or extra subnet IP, IP space for uh, our for future growth in that particular subnet in that particular availability domain so we can continue with the same design for all the other three availability domains as well what this actually gives you is that when you are sizing up your subnet it gives you an equal division of subnets across the three availability domains so that when you are designing your application it is it has the ability to uh, develop a high avail highly available application infrastructure it also gives you some reserved or extra IPs so that 
for future growth you have some extra reserved ips already with you uh, if you want to add up any resources individually within each availability domain when you were designing the uh, virtual cloud network uh, in the previous example we took the extra large uh, subnet range which is the largest which is available uh, a slash 16 network but you can choose different uh, types of different sizes as per your requirement uh, ideally what we suggest is that there are four different types of sizes that you can see uh, you can create you can go with a small vcn size with a net mask of slash 24 that actually gives you a total of 232 ips if you want to have eight subnets of slash 27 each subnet would have give you like 29 private ip spaces and on the other end if you want to go ahead with an extra large vcn size which we just went in the previous example you can take the net mask of slash 16 uh, the total number of IPs in, in a slash 16 would be 65488 private IPs. Uh, and then uh, you can have like slash 20 subnet size, giving you a total of 20 subnets. And each subnet has 4093 IP addresses. Just to make a point over here that the number, the total IPs are, or the IPs per subnet, uh, we are not counting the first two IP addresses and the last one in each subnet CIDR because they are deserved by the virtual cloud network service itself. So continuing on the same principles of VCN and subnet sizing, uh, if you take a look at the same similar example with a virtual cloud network having a CIDR range of 10 slash 16, it gets divided into three uh, slash 18s for each availability domain. Uh, and then the fourth range is as a spare or extra range for future growth within each availability domain then you can go ahead and divide it between your private subnet and your public subnet ranges and keep some uh, keep a slash 20 as your extra range as well so that for future growth in that particular availability domain you, you have some uh, additional ip ranges as well so let's take an example of a typical three-tier web application architecture so in a typical three-tier web application you have a web tier uh, you have an app tier and you have a database tier. Your web tier is, is your outfacing tier, so it can be based in a public subnets. And then you want to keep your application tier and your database tier in, the, in a private subnet because they don't need direct connectivity outside with the internet. In front of your web application tier, you can have your uh, a load balancer so that they can load balance your ex client traffic to multiple web servers which are running across availability domains. So if you consider that application, high-level application architecture, uh, you can see that from the figure that there are two different public load balancers which are living across two availability domains in public uh, subnets. From there onwards, they forward or load balance the traffic across the two availability domains uh, for your web tier. The web tier is also in a public subnet and they are living in public subnets across different availability domains. From there onwards, they forward the traffic to a private load balancer, which is basically load balancing your east-west traffic. So the private load balancer can be inside of a private subnet because it's only uh, load balancing the traffic within that virtual cloud network itself. Once the private load balancer forwards the traffic, you can then go into, you, you then have your application tier and your database tier, which are present across availability domains and within private subnets. In this manner, you have, you have divided your, your uh, subnet ranges across different availability domains. So your application has high availability uh, built in itself. So your web tier and your database tier is available across different availability domains. And similarly, your database has also uh, two different availability domains available. So you can have a data card, uh, sync up, uh, and also take uh, regular backups with the object storage for high availability. So let's take an example of one of the Oracle customers who have deployed their application on top of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Uh, so as you can see that they have, uh, they have multiple different subnets across different availability domains so that their application architecture is highly available. If one of the uh, availability domain, domain goes down, you have the other availability domain still serving the traffic. Uh, they have both public and private subnets. Their public subnet is hosting a public load balancer 
uh, which load balances the traffic across multiple web servers which are also uh, in, a, in public subnets and living across availability domains. They have a database tier uh, where within a private subnet they have a two node rack database, uh, a two node rack Oracle database. They can directly access the two node Oracle rack database uh, through, a, through a, a private dedicated connectivity to, the, to their on-premise using the IPsec VPN connection. Uh, and they also are taking regular backups uh, which are stored in the object storage service. So this completes the session about virtual cloud network best practices. Uh, thank you for joining and see you next time.